President, Congress, Iona Fife, first time attendee, first time speaker. Um, <laughs> representing the Musicians Union to move the motion fix streaming. So before I start, I'd like to ask some pertinent questions. You need to think. How often do you both actively and passively consume music every day? Over the pandemic, how many hours of solace and catharsis did you gain from listening to recorded music? How do you listen to music? Like my mother, do you stick a vinyl on a record player? Do you punt a physical CD into your car or your Walkman? Is every single one of your vinyls, uh, did you download any of it? Do you own a cassette player? Have you touched a cassette player since 19 Oat Cake? Perhaps you did, but probably not. I don't want to speak for everyone in this room, but I'm going to when I say that Congress, the majority of you, have probably at some point reached for Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, Deezer, or another streaming service, including YouTube, which has now branched into streaming. It's super easy, it's convenient, it's there at the touch of your fingertips. And yet, streaming is almost single-handedly decimating a huge proportion of both established and emerging musicians' income, although I'm going to be focusing on the latter. In 2020 alone, streaming accounted for 80% of worldwide music consumption, yet the value of one stream on Spotify is around 0 .00 sorry, 0 0.004 pence, which is split between rights holders. So it's split between the record labels and then the musicians who create the music. That's if you have a record label. At a time when both domestic and international touring is financially unviable and logistically impossible due to the compounded effects of Brexit and the pandemic, artists have relied heavily on making an income via selling their physical CDs. Um, they've also relied on making an income on digital downloads and um, streaming royalties now more than ever. Unfortunately, it has become increasingly clear to everyone in the music industry that streaming simply isn't paying artists fairly and the system as it stands isn't a sustainable source of income. So whilst musicians are not actually being paid equitably for the streaming of their works, we should actually note that the CEO, Daniel Ek of Spotify, who had previously bid over two billion for Arsenal Football Club, has very, very recently invested over 85 million pounds in an artificial intelligence military defense company, Helsing. Mr. Eck is doing okay, and he's taken all our hardworking songwriters, creators, and musicians for mugs. This is Spotify alone. It's not a big ask for folk to be paid properly for their work, is it? Daniel Ek, CEO of Spotify, is set to receive more income this year, 153 million, according to industry press reports, than what every single singer, songwriter, and musician and composer in the UK combined will receive from the streaming of their music in this country. At a time when the latest Omicron variant has cancelled even more and more live shows, and it's difficult to get bums on seats in live music venues, Early career musicians find themselves reliant on selling their work through merchandising and CD sales. But in a digital world where streaming is far more convenient than buying a physical CD, burning it, burning it onto a laptop and then putting it onto your iPod, musicians are missing out on a really vital income stream which is not being replaced by the proceeds of streaming. My recent royalty report revealed that in one calendar month, as an emerging musician, I must say, Nobody counts for um, I had amassed over 48,000 streams on Spotify alone in one calendar month, yet I was remunerated a pitiful 85 pounds. If eight people had purchased eight albums or even downloaded eight albums via my Bandcamp, I'd have made almost the exact same amount of income as that 48,000 streams. Thankfully, for the time being, I'm an independent artist with no label, so that entire 85 pounds was mine. But if I had a label, I'd have received a smaller piece of an already small pie. 
Granted, it is a wee bit ex com like confusing to explain exactly how streaming royalties are divvied up, but long story short, the most money gings to the largest labels and artists, and emerging artists are simply not being paid fairly for their work. At the end of the day, I just went mere than 85 pound for 48,000 streams. Several campaigns have since been established with the aim to hashtag fix streaming. Instead of lobbying streaming companies such as Spotify, Deezer, and Apple Music directly, the Musician Union and the Ivers Academy have appealed directly to the UK government to regulate the streaming system. After gaining over 18,000 signatures in a petition, the MU was successful in lobbying MPs and the DCMS to conduct an inquiry into the economics of music streaming. This inquiry and report was published in July 2021 and called for a complete reset of music streaming. As an independent musician, I do feel like the small guy up against a big grisly world full of sharks, labels, and industry figures ready to exploit me for whatever I'm worth and then smit, spit me back out once they've chewed through me. But sometimes a big voice comes along and can really enact change. For me, this voice was Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift knows all too well about the implications of artists not owning their own work. She continually champions for fair play for musicians, previously withholding her music from Spotify due to the streaming services option for free listening. In an open letter to Apple Music asking them to reconsider paying artists zero royalties for their streaming services first three months, Taylor Swift garnered a near immediate policy change, which would, albeit minutely, benefit musicians from every stages in their careers. Whilst we do have big voices fighting for our cause, we still need meaningful change to be enacted through legislation, and we desperately require an update to the Copyright Designs and Patents Act of 1988, which is simply no fit for the 21st century. As a result, Welsh MP and DCMS Select Committee member Kevin Brennan, MP, created a member's bill which set out several recommendations and points calling for equitable, equitable remuneration for artists, songwriters and performers. Unfortunately, it did not pass in December 2021. During the debate, SNP MP Pete Wisher explained, where would we be without the songs and songwriters? How would we enjoy our day-to-day -day life and activity without songs? Calling for support for the bill, Pete stated the need to adapt and develop political infrastructure around streaming that lets talent and creativity thrive, develop, mature, and make sure it can express itself. As an MP for Orkney and Shetland, Alistair Carmichael pointed out that during the same debate, we should all see the fixed streaming campaign as an important and integral part of the levelling up agenda. But we must address the imbalance of power between the big corporates on one hand, labels, streaming platforms, and the individuals and small businesses, independent musicians and artists on the other. Whilst the bill didn't pass, it did, however, gain a lot of support from Parliament and raise the profile of the issue in the public domain. But ensuring that this issue is resolved whilst there's still a head of steam behind it is critical. And it is this, with this in mind that I and the Musicians' Union urge Congress to seek support from MPs, particularly those from Scotland, to continue Kevin Brennan's petition and campaign to make sure this issue is and remains at the forefront of music and cultural pres presence and development. I also appeal to each Call and you every can, single one of you, you on a personal level, I am making my finishing remarks, to be mindful about the way that you consume music. Buy a CD, download the actual songs via Bandcamp or iTunes, do anything but streaming, and help build a fairer community of practice for our musicians and creators. Congress, I move. Please support this motion. Okay, thanks, colleagues. Do we have a seconder? Yes.